welcome to the Recovery Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Miller. I'm a stroke survivor and grateful recovering alcoholic. And on the eve of Thanksgiving, I'm going to be talking about hosting adult kids for the holidays. So the holidays are for making our relationships stronger, not for just getting together because we have to and tolerating each other. And I wanted to talk about some preparations that I personally um, do in order to prepare for um, myself just mentally for my kids being here. So they're in their 20s and my daughter just graduated from college last year And my son's been out of the house for a couple years now. So um, they have been out and have started doing things their way. And I wanted to talk about my take on how to approach the holidays when they're coming back home after being independent and and getting to do things their way um, and having to come home and be like, you know, (laughs) being respectful, obviously, but still, you know, I need to respect their new way of doing things as well. So I want to talk about about that a little bit. So um, yesterday I talked about dealing with various personalities And so what better place to put these tips to practice than during the holidays with your family? Um, It's important to keep the goal of why you all are together for the holidays in the forefront, Um, acknowledging that those, the, the, the time that we have together for the holidays is supposed to be a time that makes us stronger. Um, the holidays are also a great time to be of service to others. And there's, uh, we can use that to our benefit sometimes. So we'll just have to hear me out on that one. It feels good. And it's also uh, a positive way of distracting yourself from personality conflicts. So, um, in my case, I don't have any personality conflict. I personally don't have any personality conflicts with anybody else during the holidays. I really don't. There's nobody in my family, in my extended family, that um, that I worry about seeing or anything. I know, though, that there are a lot of people out there that this is a really difficult time when you're almost forced to spend time with all of these people that when you were younger, it was a lot easier to get along as you get older. Not only are you used to doing things your way and you all have to merge back together and it can be a little, um, not mesh very well together, but also, um, we all have our own kids, you know, eventually my kids are going to have kids and, and my son and my daughter will have different ways of raising their kids. And sometimes that doesn't mesh either. A great example, um, for me was when my sister and my brother and I would get together and all of our kids got together, we all raised our kids differently. So my kids didn't have any TV restrictions at all. They could just do whatever they wanted. Um, That was the way that I decided to do it. My brother and my sister both had TV restrictions for their kids. So I couldn't, if they were coming to my house, and I would have the TV on or something, we'd have to turn the TV off to be respectful of the fact that they don't just let their kids uh, sit around with the TV on. So anyway, that's that's kind of what I'm talking about and how, how do we manage that with each other. Um, so since I don't have any real 
personality conflicts with anyone in my family or with my kids. Um, he, what is the concern? Like, what is the concern for me? So here it is. Adult children coming home have acquired this new way of doing things. It's their way. And it's no longer my way. Some of it is. Some of it just happens to be the same as uh, as my way. But I need to make sure that I'm being respectful of their newfound independence. I think that it is important. And just like just like uh, my brother and my sister and I did a lot of things differently. It's funny, we were all raised in the same house and we all raised our kids like extremely differently. And so my view on things is very, very different from theirs. And all of our kids, thankfully, turned out to be just beautiful human beings, all of them. So it's it's kind of funny how we all did it totally different, and we all have very beautiful kids. Um, but I feel like it's important when the kids come home to be respectful of the different ways that they like to do things now that they are adults and they get to choose the way. And I just expect that same respect back. Uh, the same respect that I've always gotten as their parent, um, I expect that to not change, you know. Um, and I feel like we have a relationship that is conducive to that. And that's just something that happens, you know, as as they get older and you're, uh, I don't know, parenting them. But so I do expect that sort of um, consistent respect that I've always had. But I think that it's important to really embrace the independence that they have and make sure that they know that. So so what if, though, my motherly into intuition and my nurturing and sometimes my critical nature creeps into our conversations? This is something that I see happens in myself. And I really want to tame that. And, of course, I'm not talking about them not respecting um, my house or the house rules, you know, or anything like that. I'm talking about just living their way, you know, taking the way that they live in their own house and taking it here. Um, so their way is going to introduce a bit of chaos into my life. It just is. And I'm not used to chaos. It's very quiet in this house now since they've been gone. It used to be chaotic like the whole time that they were growing up. There was so many kids coming in and out of our house and and everybody was laughing. And uh, downstairs in the basement, there was usually a, you know, a, an acoustic set of drums banging and guitars and uh, just all kinds of chaos, and I've grown quite accustomed lately to not having that chaos. And um, what's a great example is this evening, I guess it was going on 7 o'clock, it's almost 9 now, uh, going on 7 o'clock, and my daughter said she was going to go to the gym, and well, for me, I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready to like put my pajamas on. <laughs> so that's not chaotic. Chaotic. It's just a different way of doing things for me. It's not what I'm used to. And, um, and so that is just an example. Nothing that really impacts me. But other than the fact that when she gets home from the gym, which I heard her come in, so she's here now, but I'm going to be recording my podcast and the dogs are already going to have been put to bed in their, in their crates. So, um, it's kind of like, 
you do your thing, I'm going to do my thing, and we just need to, like, accept each other's way of doing things. So, anyway, um, I wanted to provide, I have four tips on how to make it through the holidays without having any sort of, like, you know, rubbing each other the wrong way, or... Uh, making sure that they want to come home again <laughs> and again next time for the next holiday that's right around the corner. So, so here are four tips I have. So number one is resurfacing the patience that I once had when we were all living under the same roof. And the best way that I can articulate this is embracing the energy that is back in the house um, rather than looking at it like oh it's just it's overwhelming it's too much like there's there's noise now or you know the, uh, my daughter's talking on her cell phone I can hear her downstairs you know that kind of thing that it's it's just something that's different now but it's not anything that's bothersome. And what I want to do is is embrace that, that there is that old energy is back in the house. And I want to actually not just tolerate things, but I want to be filled with um, joy about how that energy feels in the house. I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's number one is, is resurfacing patience and embracing the energy that comes back into the house when your when your kids come home. Number two, setting boundaries for myself is going to be key in my situation for maintaining an acceptable level a visual and head discomfort. And what that means is not, uh, it's not where I'm going to draw the line for what they can't do, but rather what I'm going to do to prioritize my health. Should anything be increasing my level of discomfort and pain? Um, so if when everybody gets here tomorrow, which is Thanksgiving, I guess you know that. <laughs> well, I'm recording this on Wednesday night. So um, when when everybody gets here, if there is a lot of stimulation around me, I have to know what I'm going to do in order to take care of myself. So for me, boundary, that's what boundaries look like for me. So um if things are getting to be overwhelming for my vision or my head, I can do a couple things. I can sit down and close my eyes. I can stay right in the middle of everybody and just close my eyes, um, which is fine. Every There's just the kids and their significant others are going to be here. So, um, you know, I'm not uncomfortable doing that. If it was a bigger party that was happening, I'd probably be a little more leery about sitting around with my eyes closed. But um, I can also lay down. I can actually take the dogs outside for a potty break and just stand outside for for a few minutes if I need to. Um, or I can go upstairs and lay down if I have to. Like, um, I need to be able to say that out loud though, because in the moment when my head's not hurting and I want to be with the kids, but, um, but it's starting to feel uncomfortable in my head, I need to say to myself, no matter what, I, I know everybody else is going to say, it's okay if you go lay down. I need to say to myself, it's okay to go lay down. Like you need to go lay down because I'm only, nobody wants me to feel worse on Friday. So, um, I'm kind of making sure that I remind myself over and over again <laughs> that if things start getting not well, that I need to go lay down. And 
So number three is letting go of control. And I think uh, this one is a big one for me personally. Um, I, in my sobriety program, I was told to not have expectations. So one of the steps is that you go make amends to other people. So anybody that you had hurt uh, during your active drinking, you go make amends to them. That's one of them. I'm simplifying, obviously. But what I was told was you go make amends without expectations. And I never really got that. I didn't know what that means to not have expectations. Like, if I'm going to say amends to my dad, well, of course I have expectations that he's going to, um, you know, respond in a positive way to me. So I'm still unclear on that, and that's okay. I'm okay to do this podcast and still not have all the answers, you know, so... I need to work on that, but what I think about as it applies to this topic is letting go of control, and just like, just like when something else is bothering me, when, when somebody's bothering me, I put their name in my God box, I was thinking it could work to put the word control in my God box because the last thing I want to do is give my kids a reason to not feel comfortable here, you know, to be more uncomfortable here than they are in their own homes. And, um, I mean, that's gonna happen. I know eventually it's gonna happen, but I want them to be able to be themselves. I don't want them to feel like when they come home, I'm going to criticize them or say, you know, one thing that happened already is my daughter and I were laying in her room and we were talking about the cat litter box. And I said that I really, I I can tell that your kitty cat. So she brought her kitty cat home. I haven't mentioned that. She brought my grand kitty home. So his name is Tito and he's super cute. And he is in the bedroom, um, away safely from the dogs. (laughs) And so, uh, he's just so well taken care of and, and everything came and it was all clean and stuff. And then I, you know, it's just me. It's a mother thing. And I made a recommendation on how often to clean the litter box. And and I don't need to do that. You know, it's not something that it's it's not my place anymore. Um, sure, I can give recommendations and stuff, but it seems like when I do that kind of thing, it's more coming from a parenting place than a, if my friend came over and had a cat and I would say, so are you cleaning the the litter box a certain, like I wouldn't do that to a friend. So it's not my place for my adult children for me to tell them about you know, how often to clean the litter box. I don't think. And other parents may disagree. You know, we we all get to do it differently. But um, I'm really trying to tame that need, that like burning need inside of me to tell them how to do things. And um, I feel like I do it to my son a lot And, um, I want to try to keep working on that. Um, I don't know why I do it even more for him. Um, we always had a joke, uh, when my son was, I don't know, um, probably six or so. And my daughter was two. 
uh, their grandfather, who has since passed, told me that I would, uh, I won't let my son leave the house, but I'll let my daughter play in the street. <laughs> so it's the same thing. I, I just, uh, I treat them differently in some ways. And so anyway, I want to make sure that I, that I keep working on that need to feel like I'm in control of their lives. And in the same way, like when our kids go off and have their own lives, their problems are their problems. And I think that's why when they did move out, I stopped feeling so stressed out because I wasn't owning their problems anymore. And that was my own that was my own, um, I think, character defect was whenever they were dealing with something, it's just like I absorbed that problem and it's like I was right in it with them. I didn't know how to let them own a problem and have me not inject myself. So it's like when they come home, I start owning, you know, I start owning their stuff again. And, um, And I don't think that that's healthy for either of us for me to do that. So number three, letting go of control. And number four, I think this is the positive, a really positive one, which is let new traditions unfold. And so my kids both have a significant other in the mix now. And I think that it's important for us to not force old traditions on this new growing family. As we have, you know, we have a new kitty cat. They both have their significant others. So maybe the things that we were doing before when it was just the four of us, when it was just um, the four of us in this house, Maybe those things don't fit as well when there's a significant other with them. So we need to be open to allowing new traditions to unfold um, and be open to saying, this is what we all do now for this holiday. This is what we used to do. It's great to, to reminisce on the things that we used to do and and shift and bend uh, traditions for the holidays. But it's important, and it's been really important for me to understand. And I didn't understand this until I got sober, honestly, which is, I think, part of the reason why I've talked about in the past how I always felt like I was standing still and my brother and my sister were moving on and building their lives because... I always sat in the memories of my childhood and my past. I didn't, I think because I was drinking so much, I didn't really evolve into a a full adult that I could be at that time. So I was 42 when I got sober and I felt like a, I felt like I was still a kid, you know, I felt like I still was a dependent of somebody. And it wasn't until I got sober and I started growing and I started feeling like I wasn't standing still anymore. Very slowly, I felt like I started taking steps forward and and it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like Fred Flintstone in his car where he starts running in place um, and then all of a sudden the car just zooms off. That's how it was. It was when I first got sober, it was like I was taking steps, but it felt like I was kind of standing in place. And then all of a sudden I started moving and then zoom Like I took off into this new way of life as a sober 
human being. And, um, and I recognize that where I am now is a place where I'm making new memories with my kids. And yes, we built memories even when I was drinking. And they're great memories. I don't think I ruined any holidays. At least they haven't told me about that yet. But um, now's the time to build new memories and build new traditions and and make this this new family that's going to grow and that's exciting. Um, make it something to continue to look forward to when when we're all together, you know, and, and always come back to that, that core reason why you're together. And that's to continue to make our relationships stronger. I, I can't, um, emphasize enough that point that for so long, I thought holidays were a reason to drink, uh, truly. And then, um, as I, right before I started getting sober, holidays were a time that I was, I felt terrible because I was hung over and there was never enough alcohol and I just wanted to go home and drink. Um, but then once I got sober, it's like I could breathe, you know, it's like I was, I started being very bright eyed and bushy tailed at these things. And I started really cherishing those times. Um, again, you know, I cherished them when the kids were really little and I wasn't drinking so much and, and, um, but, but now, um, it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, and I know that some people who are just getting sober or, or keep relapsing, the holidays are a really difficult time. And if, if somebody have, hasn't completely practiced step one, and realized that their life is unmanageable and got into step two and started started finding their way in sobriety, the holidays are a time that they dread. And that makes me really sad. And I've heard it just this year as the holidays are approaching. I've heard people saying, um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to the holidays. I'm putting together a a plan to make sure that, you know, I'm safe, I'm not going to drink and stuff. But, but that's that when I hear that people are, are not looking forward to the holidays for that reason, it really does break my heart because it does get better. It really does get better. But it's important in the beginning to put yourself in an environment that's loving, and people respect the 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 fact that you're not drinking and um and luckily I do I I have that loving environment and I've been able to get to this point where um where drinking is not something in the forefront of my mind really ever but definitely not on the holidays um so this year I'm really excited to have them here and and start you know, figuring out how to do it even better, how to be, how to have my adult kids home for the holidays and be even better at it each year. So thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.